play. Team Hawk answering back. There goes the Diggy and the Kaja. As well, Team Hawk getting rid of the Valentina and the Wan Wan. Oh, right now you still have Lolita available on the table, who is one of the best tanks in the meta because it counters a lot of the marksmen. Are they going to pick that up? I mean, that's something you have to think about. Also, the Hilda. Are we going to see that band coming out right away just to make sure Team Hawk doesn't play their character? Well, you know, yeah, I agree. The Hilda has been just a monstrous pick, especially for the Malaysian teams. They just love their Hildas, right? And their Hildas, well, they love it for a very good reason. It's been super successful. 100% win rate for both the Malaysian teams. But honestly, looking at it, it's a bit too situational to go for the bans early on here, especially in the first game, where both teams are still trying to read each other out. So we are just going to see another meta ban, a prio ban, with the glue getting taken out of play by Echo. Blue monster being banned away. That means a lot of characteristic or a uh, character ban characters are still on the table, right? We talk about Hilda, we talk about Lolita, those tanks are available. Sometimes right now you can also pick up the Eve as the first pick. Oh. And that's still available as well. We are five heroes uh, deep into the bands and Eve is still out there. So one of these teams has to make the call. And I'm guessing Echo's not shy to do that. I'm guessing uh, and I'm willing to wager they're gonna do that here. Well, yeah. You know, usually they do go for the Fanny ban. Whenever anyone's up against Echo, they ban out the Fanny. So the Yeev, the Fanny, now open, up for grabs for Echo. What do they opt for? The answer is none. It's the carry for Benny. Yeah, absolutely. You still have a lot of counters for carry. Lolita is one of the best options right now. But are they going to stick with that? Or again, we mentioned Hilda over and over again. But here, they have the choice to do that. If the Hilda does come through in these first two picks on the swing back after the carry, then does that mean they have to go Hilda carry? Because I'm not liking the Hilda into the Eve. Agree. It's yeah. so hard. I think right now, the focus for Team Hawk has to be Cryo Heroes, the Eve. Oh, Eve. I was expecting something like the Fanny, especially considering Gary just really likes that Fanny. A great Fanny player. We saw this at MSC. But it is going to be the Yuzong locked in. They want to create some backline threats here to really threaten the backline of Echo. But that's two signature picks. Yaoi on the Cho and Sanford presumably on the Grok. Presumably on the Grok. But when we know, I mean, either one, they have to play one of those characters. Or maybe Grok in the jungle as well. But right now, Grok with a flicker with a new patch came out. It's so insane because you really can't see the wall charge. You can charge from the end of it and then he flicker onto your face and you are just dead. So right here, I mean, most likely it's going to be a sim for Grok. And I cannot, we see, I cannot wait to see the uh, Yaoi on the Chow because this oh, yeah. is going to be insane. That's a signature pick if I've ever seen one. Uh, might as well just make it a shoe in if ever Echo wins. Ladies and gentlemen, one more pick for Team Hawk here. A lot on the minds of Coach Bob, seeing that one half of the San San duo already has their hero. That's the Grok. Leaves me wondering, and I'm sure a lot of people watching at home, what hero is going to the hands of Sanji. The answer, though, to the carry, the Irithel. Mm -hmm. For me, honestly, looking at the compositions right now, Team Hawk don't really have a choice, right, for the gold lane. Because firstly, well, carry has been picked up. One one's been banned away. Usually those are the two picks that you want to go for, but considering the amount of engages here, Team Hawk, Panda, can't really go for that immobile carry in the back line. They can't go for your standard, just Beatrix. You need someone with mobility, and Irithel brings that to the table. Hasn't been too successful in this meta, but up against this composition, it's what works. It's what is viable, right? A good matchup, too, up against carry will ensure that at least the Irithel can lane properly, farm up to that item power spike. And Arathel is actually lane bullying. The skill 1 2 damage <laughs> is really, really good. Still and I was expecting them to ban Hayabusa here. Because if you think about Arathel and Eve early game, they're lacking a lot of mobility. Yes, Arathel, once he gets the ultimate, the heavy crossbow, you can run really fast. You can start doing a lot of damage. But before that, you're more like a, just a Layla type of marksman. Yeah, you're, you're waiting. Exactly. Same as Eve. We're talking about lack, lack of mobility. So, yes, they're going to ban the Hayabusa. Are we going to see the Fanny Ban coming out? Oh, yeah, it, it's odd. Uh, in a high level MLBB play, especially when we're talking about the past six to nine months, to see a Fanny out there in the open. And now that we're taking out junglers, yeah. given that Team Hawk nor Echo Sir, have a clear answer. Is banning. There, speak of the devil, banning out the Fanny. Too risky to actually leave it yeah. open, right? They do have the first pick, but it just shows you that Team Hawk have another another pick up their sleeves, yeah, right? I mean, you don't want a Fanny into a Croc or a Cho. Exactly. There's a wall, there's a lockdown uh, ability too for the Fanny, but it's just a good setup for Echo too. Right now, Martis being banned away. 
Gary, first pick in the second phase for Team Hawk. Right now, I mean, Team Hawk, they miss ball control. I mean, look at their, look at their comp right now. Irith now, Yeeve, yes, you have slow, but you don't have hardcore CC. So you're missing those key engages. Are we going to see the Lolita coming out to initiate those fights so we can have follow-up damage? Yep, there's nothing on demand. There's nothing that can confirm, like, with very little clapback. Because right now, it's only really that Yu Zhong, right? Petrify, without yeah. The ult, yeah. Without the combo, I you're waiting on your cooldowns. Nyra. It looks like they're, they're holding it back. This is a signature hey, pick time. for Gary and the swing back from Echo. It, it's very fast. They go ahead, get that Farsa. They're, they're fighting on range for range here. Now you can really understand why they went for the Ling Ban, the Martis Ban too. There's two heroes that can really threaten the back line. That's very present here for Echo. And the final pick, it is going to be the Grok into the jungle. Lapu picked up for Sanford in the XP lane. Final pick for Team Hawk up against this composition. They need dive. They need someone to be able to help the Yu Zong or perhaps someone to just help the back line. You need to choose between the two. What do you think? I got to give it to give that to Miracle because all this character of flex picks and that's why those teams who can flex picks are going to be really strong in the matter right now. They know if Grok put on the side and go against a Dyroth, for example, it might be really dangerous. Or going against Jung might be really dangerous. So they decided to put a jungle and put a stronger laner on the side. We don't know. There was a time in MPLPH for like three or four months that Cho went into the jungle. That's not out of the question. True. Oh, you're right. But knowing Yaoi, I mean, right? knowing Yaoi, right? knowing Yaoi, the Cho's probably going to be on him. And here yeah. it is. The Hilda. You called it. It's the, the Hilda. The Malaysian Hilda. It's so scary, dude. I mean, again, 100% win rate. Todok used this, destroyed Kyrie. Then Team Hawk used it, destroyed the valley. I, absolutely. I mean, but you gotta understand, Hilda is gonna be really strong in the jungle in the early game. But if it gets to the late game, Carrie is gonna melt Hilda in like a matter of two seconds, right? Yep, yep, so yep. can you actually open up the game with Hilda, with Daros? Because their early game is looking insane right now. Yeah, so given the snowball, if it does work out, for Echo, the whole Malaysian offense might need some reworking, some recalibration to work out for a late game comeback. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to head into game one in this upper bracket bout. The first game in a best of five. Can I hear a ye bombe? And a oh, echo loud and proud for all the fans here Five in Sinaya. And here we go. Game one between Echo and Team Hawk. Right Welcome off the bat, you can Mobile see Legend. Hilda's already finding her way into the opposition jungle. Here it comes. But uh, we're going to have a red star, seems like. Yep. It's a uh, mirrored start. And you called it. It's Grok in the jungle. Yep. yep. The Grok in the jungle, it's, again, just something that's really flexible, right? That's the only thing I have to say. We haven't seen much of this right now. Min actually Aww. still jumping into the enemy jungle onto Carl TZ. Min's going to be stunned up as Sanji jumps in oh. with a rotation. That's going to be the wall popped in, and Min's going to be caught low. Has Damn a sprint. Sanji oh. flicker. Vines first blood. And there you have it. That's the loud and proud from Echo. They were not expecting a quick response. Team Hawk, Echo seems to have found the solution. Yeah, but a lot of times what Team Hawk does with Hilda is they will die a few times in the early game just to grant vision. Sometimes they just don't care about this early game death. They know, okay, I'm going to sacrifice myself, but the vision is more important. You can see Hilda, despite the death, is now making way onto the bottom side to find more aggression already. But the question is, was it 400, 300 gold in the first minute worth it, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it, oh, here we go. There's a lot being placed in with the wild charge and even that Jeet Kune Do. Oh. Yaoi picks, up, picks it up in the end and it's still just 2-0. Great start for Echo. Dave, I said, was it worth 300, 400? <laughs> now is it worth 1,000? Oh, 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 outside, another pickup for Team Hawk. Now they have a really open up the map on the top lane. 12 seconds before the turtle. Panda is going to be dove on that final hit, and he fades away. Benny picking up a whole lot of turret gold, too. And it's 1,000 on the board already for Echo. Yeah, I mean, yes, you have 1,000 gold lead, and turtle is coming up. And look at the both side jungler, though. Uh, bottom lane. Ben, Benny. able to dish out so much damage, but Benny still is able to survive. Meanwhile, the top lane, yeah, he finds the Jikujo oh. flicker, brings the jungler back to Sanji for him to pick up, and it's turtle number one, secured by Echo. Dave, are you seeing this? It's about 2k ahead in two minutes. 
Yeah, I know. It's absolutely insane. This is aggression on aggression right here. Hilda is already, again, looking for a vision here. But sometimes if you actually die too much in the early game, it might not turn your favor in this case, right? Min, even though like he's in the enemy's side, he's finding this vision, and Kauti knows this, but it doesn't seem like it's getting too much done besides just dying over and over again. He's a distraction. And right go. now, he's trying to buy as much time as possible. Zwa Yaoi jumps in with the Jeet Kune Do, bringing him back with that way the Dragon. Min's gonna fall for the third time in this game, and it's still just Echo controlling the pace of the game. Despite that way of the Dragon being slightly off angle, there was enough damage between the three members of Echo to punish Min. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Hilda right now going in, this is something, even though he's dying though, I gotta give them benefit because we saw the game that uh, uh, Team Valley went against, right? Even though Hilda was dying, but he was distracting so many people. And the other lanes are farming because Hilda know exactly where your opponents are. So this might be something they're doing right here as well. Well, there's still maybe a couple more turtles for them to hedge on that. Yeah. But right now, Echo seems to still be on top of the just to-do list for Team yeah. Hawk, right? You kill the Hilda, and then you move on and convert. It doesn't really bother the laners of Echo. Doesn't at all, right? They're even just grouping up here. It's oh. in the top lane oh. here, the XP lane. It's 1v1, Lola versus Sanford. Lola using that Petrify earlier to regain some HP, as in the bottom lane, the gold lane. It does seem like both Man and Panda has been taken low by a dive attempt by Echo. Yeah, but it just trade off on skills. So you can see Echo does have the control on the map. Despite the Hilda, I mean, this they really thought about how to counter this guy. Even though the early game, I thought they wouldn't have the damage to kill someone as beefy, as tanky as Hilda, but I was proven wrong. And now the second turtle is spawning. You can see Echo is already in position to contest this objective yet again. It's just full control right yep. now for Echo. 2.4k gold lead, a lot of gold being placed into one of the core members. We said it, Sanji on the Farsa, 2-0 and 1. You got wave clear, you got poke, and on the Farsa, you have the wings by wings. That's additional rotation speed across the map. Team Hawk don't really have an answer to that right now. Well, there was a small response oh. from them. Can Gary get out? He's okay. I think this is the response from Team Hawk, is just try to pressure Benny. Send dudes down into that gold lane. They're yeah. I mean, look at Yaoi here on the box. I get vision from the Hilda. It just, oh, look at, let's take a look at the item right now, as well as emblems. It's like both sides are picking about a similar, you know? For marksmen, they just want to have a safe laning phase. Yeah, what worries me is the difference between the different junglers, right? It's a clear tank utility jungler. Oh, all right. But wait, Yaoi! An uncharacteristic miss from Yaoi as he gets punished. Min picks up a kill. Honestly, in that conversion, Min, I think that's the worst player to have a kill on, especially considering he's just been a distraction for Team Hawk. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once you get a kill, you reset the, the goal count. If you die again, that's another 200 gold to the enemy pocket. Especially you lose the key winning condition, which is the vision factor. Yeah, but at this point, I think THQ, Hawk, is just happy to have a kill, right? Punish the lover boy, oh. and they go from there. Just as you say it, they get another in the gold lane. Actually ambushing Carl TZ and finally getting a grip back on the game. You know, I gotta give some credit to Team Hack's entire draft strategy or philosophy. The Dyroth is one of the best characters, fighters to kill tank. You know, with, now you're thinking about, yes, they're lacking quality control, but because it's so easy for them to kill tanks, just with a little bit of slow that they have, they're able to do it. And then we can expect for this to get a little better as they get items and they build up confidence and they figure out what exactly Echo is trying to do as they push this bottom lane turret. Oh, what a, what a, what a mirror move. Top lane too. Echo gets that. Trade, right? XP for gold and Lola had to just give up that XP lane. Knowing he was playing the weak side of the map, he would much rather just come to the mid lane, rotate over and help the other members. But right now it does seem like Yaoi wants to look for just additional mid control with Sanji as that is actually going to be Yaoi once again poked down by Min. Mon's rotating already, but pay attention to Echo's positioning as Call oh. jumps into the ball charge. Sanford joins in and it's an all out collapse. Call going to fall, but Lola jumps into the back line with Retrify, finding Yaoi. The Furious Dive not able to find them, but Team Hop have won the team fight. They're going on to the turtle and this is the turnaround. A tough 5v4 situation for Echo that Team Hawk capitalized on. Dave, Hawk got a turtle here. Yeah, I mean, there are two reasons for the key, for the key of the victory for Team Hawk. They have Hilda. It's becoming increasingly harder to kill now. Now you can see Hilda jumping into the child. They can't do anything to him. They don't want to waste skills on him either. At the same time, Ujong is slowly but surely become a monster to the back line. You saw how much threat he posed 
two, the mid laner, two Sunjay on the far side. And we're expecting that exactly, right, from Team Hawk. They survived the early game uh, counter from Echo on that Hilda strat, and then now there's this mid-game power spike. The mid-game power spike is going to be quite massive for both of these teams, like looking at their compositions. But honestly, I do feel like the later the game goes, it's so even. Both teams have just drafted themselves for a very good early mid and even late stage. But it does seem like Akko is making a comeback here. I mean, sorry, Team Hawk is making a comeback. But look at Akko's um, marksman. Look at Benny QT on the carry. 58, 6,000 gold, about 1,200 gold ahead on the opposition. This carry is going to be an absolute unstoppable oh. force in a little bit. Yeah. Early pop on the fence. Here comes Lola. Black Dragon formed by Lola. Trying to find someone. Out called. Easy to be petrified there, but does have the wild charge to get out. Now Team Hawk once again jumping in. Yeah, we're gonna be able to find the way to the dragon, but it's gonna be brought back to the team. Panda with an amazing position right now, but it's gonna be bending QT3 hitting as well. Oh! Flickering forward against the members! Benny QT still able to find some damage for getting shut down by Min. Sanford now running back. It's a three for two. A flicker forward by Benny. Holy moly. But the air strike comes in. Panda still able to fall. Actually, oh. but the damage is enough. Now it's gonna be 1v3. Oh. Min gets shut down and Sanji picks up a double. A delayed wipeout off the back of the storm's aggression. Benny Cutie has entered the building. Yes, Benny Cutie with the flank on the marksman. We talk about Echo's character playstyle is to split push, is to flank, and they do it on every single position, including the marksman. That's insane. Yep, you're expecting the split push or that angle from Benny Cutie from Echo in the late game, and we were just talking about that mid game spike. And again, this is the evolution of the storm. But oh, here we go. Benny has arrived, man, very low. Sanji's gonna be caught, shut down by Gary. This is it. It's gonna be the flicker, actually, by Call Tizi. Lola jumps in the back line. Benny with no flicker. Lola, Lola versus the world right now. Oh. He's still able to dish out the damage, taking a kill oh. back, and even surviving with one. Call Tizi gonna be gunned down now with Panda chasing him. It's a four for zero for Team Hop. The goal's been equalized, but Echo found the Lord. The Malaysians have caught the Filipino team slacking, and yeah, they got the Lord, but they just had one dude left. Four for none. Team Hawk on the swing back. Yes, Echo used everything they got to burst down the Lord, and the Malaysian team find the opening. They just find one target at a time, starting from the mid laner. This is a very, very united team. Five men moving together. You can see just sweep through the opposition on the map, one after one. This is so good to watch. Oh my goodness. Oh, the Echo didn't even get to capitalize on the Lord. Yep. Uh, yeah, it fought, what, maybe five to ten seconds? But Echo now have to reconsider. Oh, yeah, we get here to we go. On to Min. He's going to be bursted down, melted, taken out of the game. Now you see him, now you don't. Looking at it, Man still wants to be able to clear this wave, defending the tier one in the mid lane. Let's talk about how Team Hawk fought with a 5,000 gold deficit and won. It's sometimes not about a gold deficit, it's about number advantage, right? They started off with 5 on 1 to take down Sunji in the mid lane, and then they move on to the Lord and start taking over the fight. So because of one fight alone, they even up the total gold, and now actually on top, the one I'm actually worried about is still going to be Benny Cutie on the late game. This guy's getting so much farm, and if you don't can't kill carry next time, it might be carry turning around and wipe out the entire side of Team Hot. All right, good news, bad news. Right, Benny Cutie is a brewing storm. Uh, he showed us a little bit of what he can dish out later on, but bad news is there's an answer. Lola will constantly be looking for him. So I guess it's more of a matter of deterrence. Like, can I find you? And are you gonna have the confidence to find that angle again, knowing that I'm here? And I think right there, especially in the fight that Benny flickered forward, it was great for them because it was a curveball, right? As a Yu Zong, as you know, if you're Lola, you would expect, I wanna dive to the back line mm -hmm. for Min too. If Benny flickers forward, they're like, wait. He's not here. He's what? not here, what, what happened? No, it's home. It's actually the opposite. It's like a re reverse psychology, mm -hmm. should I say? They do the things that you least expect. Here comes Min, finding the vision. He does not care. Walking through every bush safely. But here comes Gary. Oh, oh Yowie! Finds a Jikun but only to Min right now. That's gonna be the wild charge, knocking three up. But that's the real world relation to wing damage. Man now still gonna be able to sprint out as Gary oh. jumps in. Sanford to be able to find their kills. Lola still able to actually back off. Call Benny. and Benny right now, looking for some more. But it's just the roamer traded in for the mid laner. Echo with a favorable trade. 
Wow, what a trade right here. And this is what we're talking about. Lola trying to find the flank again onto carry, but then QD is getting tankier and tankier as we go. If you cannot one-shot this marksman, she will turn it around and everyone will perish. Yep, and again, icing on the cake. Benny Cutie did not need to use his flicker to win that engagement. That's so, so good for yeah. Echo. And, and it's gonna convert into this Lord. I just don't know if it's for free. I'm not sure if Team Hawk is even considering uh, going for a contest but the way the map looks. It looks like, yeah, Echo is going to score a Luminous Lord. Oh, that's gonna be really tough for Team Hawk. Even while they had the gold lead just for a bit, they weren't able to convert on objectives. Now, they're finally able to find a turret tier one up top, trading it for the Lord. But with this composition, Echo just has a bit more to say when it comes down to sieges. Yeah, absolutely. You have Farsa with a lot of pressure with the ultimate. Lord is going to go down from the top side. That means the mid two towers are not going to stand for any longer. Yep, uh, given that the first Lord, yeah, Echo just flubbed that. THQ, they defended so well. Now, the minions have become enhanced even more, so they can leave lanes and start going. Oh, Sanji popping oh. an early feathered airstrike. Yeah, we looking for an angle. Can he get it? All right, main artery penetrated. Echo making moves on the map. Tier one taken down a mid lane as they focus once again to rotate across the map. Min already positioned. Sanford spots him, but Min still wants to just act as a distraction, buying as much time as possible. Meanwhile, though, you do see in the mid lane and even in the bottom lane, the tier two was taken down. Team Hawk still able to micromanage really well, taking the Lord down and defending pretty well. Yeah, they only lost, I think, like two towers, one on the bottom side, one in mid. I mean, Echo, even though they paralleled the sync, the wave really, really well, but Team Hawk surprisingly able to pull off this defense, I think largely it's thanks to Eve and Arathel. They're doing all right here. So again, it's another swing back. Echo at the lead once more. A very, very small lead, mind you. But the map is looking blue all throughout. I think that's oh. what happens when you get these major objectives and your opponents are forced to rotate together. See how closely Team Hawk is. Oh, and you can see, honestly, just the way Man's playing, right? He's trying to bait out Yaoi's uh, Jeet Kune Do flicker because he does have that purify, right? Uh, Man, notice his positioning. Always somewhat just in the middle or in front, actually. Yep, and I think what that bought for Panda is a lot of gold. Yeah, look at Panda's gold right now. The thing that the worst me increasingly for Team Hawks is Aratha when it gets a late game. Yes, does a lot of damage, but that's only for squishy characters. And if you look at Echo, how tanky Whoa. their front line is. Oh, Carl TZ getting poked out. He's so, so low. Carl TZ gonna have to back off for a bit. Sanford opening up the map once again. That's gonna be the Black no. Dragon form popped in by Lola. Instant disengage from Echo, but it's gonna be Benny QT is gonna be the target right now. It's actually gonna be Sanji caught. He's gonna be stuffed up. He's gonna be slain. Min losing immortality right now in front of it, but the real world of Blade catches two. Lola tries to rectify, but it's gonna be melted down. No. Benny QT once again bring it forward. Benny, 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 Benny! With the triple kill, still somehow saving the game. Team Hawk, they got that in the pocket. Mon still with Gary, more resources to play with. Three for three, what a tough trade. They will happen. Yeah, I would think the most important Team Hawk's victory there is Min's survival. He survived, it's able to do the magic damage needed to kill Gary, because that's probably the only character right now that can do that amount of damage. Off, of course, on top of you, Gary on the sides, doing the swings, doing the skill one, two, three combo. So I think that's the only reason that Benny Kuti got taken down. If this character stays alive, that could be Echo, complete sweep, and could have been again, actually. Yep, in the long run, it seemed like Echo was out of the woods. It seemed like they baited out almost every possible ult that THQ could put on the map, but so far, it looked like THQ were hiding some aces, hiding some kings, and now look, Yaoi. Uh-oh, that's the mortality popped in. Sanji's gonna be caught by the collapse from the Malaysian champions. Once again, that's a two for zero, Min and a Midst of it all, gonna be caught with the bravest fighter and the stun. That's gonna be Lola jumping in as well. Ming gonna lose a lot of HP, but still gonna be able to survive with one HP. E Pump and Hawk, they're here to come and play. Oh, check the base. Benny Cutie had to go home and defend. Carl Tizi just whacking away at these minions one at a time. It looks like the split push kings are the one who's gonna get split push themselves. THQ converting into a straight lord. It's a luminous lord for the Malaysians. What? What a play from Team Hawk. And I gotta say, I see a different level of Team Hawk right here. They're so disciplined. They go on one target at a time. Despite the fact that Man was zoning the entire backline of Team Echo, he quickly made a comeback to reunite with Lola to win that team fight and eventually survive with Sliver of Health.
I'd say maybe in, in the five or six major team fights in this 17 minute game, Team Hawk have been so good on the recovery. Uh, on a mechanical level, you'd say Echo are just waiting for battle spells, waiting for ults, right? But Team Hawk always have that next level, always have that decision after the post engage. 3.5k gold lead. The 17 minute of the game oh. with the evolved Lord. Enhanced Lord still marching down in that bottom lane. This is a tough defense. Can Echo do it? Looking for that first engage. There's a Feather Dare strike. Slowly but surely, Team Hawk making their way oh. in. Black Dragon Form! Lola into the midst, jumps in, gets out with the Furious Diamonds. That's the Bravest Fighter catching Panda. It's a flicker away by Panda right now. Oh. That's gonna be Sanford, still surviving. Echo have cleared the Lord out. Team Hawk deciding to go back to the mid lane. Gets the base turret down. Rotating up top. Yowie! Yowie. Finds Panda! Furious Diamond pops in. Bit of UT finds the kill on the Panda as Lola's gonna be caught. Immortality pops, and that's Lola falling to the hands of Benny. But Team Hawk have taken two base turrets. At the price of your inhibitors, Echo have gone with a stellar defense, and they've sent Team Hawk packing, going home. How can Echo capitalize? I mean, Echo at this point, there's not enough minion wave, and also Team Hawk made a really good decision to retreat really fast. Let's take a look at the team fight. It started off from Yaoi, really decisive engage, and I gotta see the wall. From Coward TZ is insane over there. Just blocking two people away. You can see Team Hawk just quickly retreated. They want to make sure you don't capitalize on the death. Oh! Yowie saved the game with the way the dragon now getting caught. Team Hawk looking to capitalize as Echo disengages. Min jumping in, looking for a play. Sanford gonna be caught low as Gary jumps in for the damage. Oh. Charge. Connects on the two. Min's gonna lose the immortality as Gary once Benny. again is looking for some damage. Benny gonna be caught. Panda does some damage back. Look at the danger! Oh my Benny finds the killing spree. Bravest fighter on the back line as Panda's gonna be stunned up. That's Sanford dealing so much onto Panda. But here's Lola as well. Panda gonna be taken down. Lola to the back line. Benny with a flicker out. Gary's still low. Benny chasing. Oh! It's a shutdown for Benny. Q T. Damn you, Benny. Why are you so good? 11 3 and 3. Gonna go ahead and help Sanji clear out. But that could have been so much worse for Echo. Team Hawk getting real scrappy. They know they're ahead. But. Echo still know the right decision at the right time. The map is against them, but so far it's not over. Here's an evolved Lord. Dave, what's this Lord looking like? Chances for either team to get it? I mean, it seems like it's going to be 80 to 20 for the favor of Echo right now. They have four up compared to only two. And on top of the fact that here you have Retribution from Car TZ and you have this Shredder from Carry. Look at Benny Cutie just losing the drop in HP of the Lord in a matter of seconds. Benny. Just Benny. Just Benny. Benny. That's all I have to say. Yeah. And honestly, that's all we have to say. That fight, he just popped off. It seems to be either Benny gets caught out or Benny just takes over. It's just one or the other. And so far, he's, he's slowly understanding more the, the decision process for Lola. It's, it looks like he knows more and more better when Lola's going to try to find him. Exactly, and Lola used the dragon form to come looking for him, and that's when, after the dragon's done, that's when Kerry showed up again into the team by rejoining the team fight and actually shredded everybody on the map. They're really fighting this fight well, slowly but surely and steadily. Oh, Honestly, man. looking at how they're going to be pushing now, Team Hawk with the Evolved Lord, right? It's Echo pushing in with a 4,000 gold lead. It doesn't really mean much in the later stage of the game because everybody has gone to a point where it's all full items. How do they do Team Hawk defend this? I mean, it, right now with the Lord, and by the way, I like the details from Cartes is now they block the path for the Lord. This way, Lord's gonna take longer to go to the base. Yep. And this will allow more super minions to come out, and that will really help you when you push the base. They're increasing every chance they can get, and here comes the push. Evolve Lord, cracking the base. Base turret number one taken down. Team Hawk looking for that defense right now as Lola jumps in with a black dragon form, just zoning Echo away. Lord at 10,000 HP, melted down. Real world regulation popped in the mid lane to clear out the wave and to zone Echo away. Team Hawk with a masterful defense. Clean from the Malaysian squad, the MPL Season 10 MY champions. There's a lot of old spent though to get that done. Yowie looking for one. Here we go. Yowie gonna flicker forward. Winner trunched by Gary to bait it out. Sanford now helping his teammate, but Yowie's gonna be taken low. Still alive. That's both teams disengaging, but it's Echo who Man. finds the base turret. Min still looking for something as he opens up the map. 
Man gonna be able to slow some people down with the Ice Queen one in the second ability. Min still again oh! jumping in. Benny gonna be able to dash away from the wall. Team Hawk still chasing, but they will not be able to find it. It's a flicker baited out. Oh. Sanji, no flicker! Lola with the Black Dragon form comes in with a touch and baited out. Sanji gonna be gone in the midst of it all. Dashing with Sanji losing the mortality. Gary picks up one. It's a one for zero, but 22 minutes on in the game. 50 seconds for the respawn timers. Oh, and this whole time it's just Min in the base defending. Are we looking at potential clapback from Echo? They were also left reeling. They were gassed from that last team fight. Dave, we're down a one inhibitor for Team Hawk. I mean, this is such an even game. Actually, oh, no there's more. no more. Oh. The minute wave is too strong. I was thinking just a hill alone is not going to cut it. You can't. You can't. And by the way, at this point, Carry is the deciding factor. Can you take down Benny? Is the win condition for Hawk? And it doesn't seem like they have the resources to do it. It's going to be up to Dyroth, Eve, and you don't jump in at the exact same time to even have a chance on Benny. Is this the longest game in M4 so far? Approaching. I Approaching. think uh, Occupy had uh, won a one long game against the RRQ Hoshi uh, in the group stage. But here in the knockouts, boy oh boy. Best believe stakes are much, much higher. Lord here, approaching half health. Oh, look at where Benny is. Look at where Benny is. Uh oh, no waiting. Once again, Lola gonna be able to actually jump in. Sanford doing the same thing right now. Black Dragon Form pops in. It's asking to be Yaoi, finding the way the dragon. Yaoi's gonna be taken down right now. Back but look at the mid lane right now. Team Hawk's gonna be able to look for the Lord. Penny is still walking back, Benny. trying to save the game. Benny in the mid lane, Benny, looking the for a big play. Benny. Has been wave, flickering forward. Benny. 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 In the best of five, loud and proud, that's their trademark. The split push, y'all did cover up your back doors and Benny came a knocking. One zero in this best of five. Echo goes on, scores the first win. Dave, you see that coming? <laughs> well, when you pointed out about Benny's position, I think the entire stage, entire world was looking at him just quietly and secretly planning the backdoor, and they did it. You cannot look for a jungler to backdoor, for Echo is their marksman. Well, They've done this two times now. They've, at this point, for me, True. countless times. <laughs> but did you see where exactly Ben set it up? He set it up from such a long angle. What, was that river, mid-river? Yep. And it was top side, right? So he was away from the fight. It was such a risky play to go for, but yet he just did it. Oh, wow. Chad Benny. Chad flickering Benny. forward, waiting in the bush, making the risky plays. <laughs> but if it pays off, it pays off, you man. See, they got the game. You see the face on Coach Tick and Coach Trev? It, it's both unexpected and just as planned. Yeah. So this is something straight out of the Echo playbook. I mean, absolutely saw the time when they engaged, right? Just when Benny was about to split push. That's when the entire team collapsed on Team Hawk to distract them and making sure that Benny has the chance, has the time necessary, the extra two seconds to take the win. Yeah, and this is exactly where uh, the aforementioned uh, Echo mic check uh, is gonna matter because there's gotta be some complex way that that was set up, right? But for now, we would like to remind everyone of the M4 Battle Night. It goes live this January 21st. Expect loads of events and rewards up for grabs in game. First off, complete battle tasks in the game on January 21st to get a skin choice chest. You can choose a skin you like the most from the chest. I would uh, choose a hero that you made. Now, aside from that, the battle bonus awaits you on the same day. Play matches and you'll get team star protection for three matches, double star raising points, double protection points, double EXP and double BP for five matches. We are not stopping there. Wow. Free access to all heroes and loads of epic skins will be available that very day. Save the date. Log into the game on January 21st. Enjoy the match and win tons of rewards. Let's all celebrate the M4 World Championships together, including all of your friends. Tell them the M4 Battle Night happening January 21st. It's been an awesome time, lads. Let's throw it over to our analysts and see what they think. Guys, what's going on? All right, here we are. This is Analysis Treks today, along with <laughs> Wolf it. and Gideon. Um, how are you guys feeling after that insane game? I don't know how to feel, but this guy, man, I have to ask you, why does it have to always be 
Malaysia. And why does it always have to be echo with when it comes to those back to our place? And of course, Malaysia with the, I don't know, always the nail biter series. Look, we like to play interesting games. We like to give the best of Mobile Legends. And come on, was that not the most interesting game so far? That's what I thought. Most wow. definitely a very, very interesting game. Yeah. I mean, from start to finish, from draft until that final split push moment. Yeah. But before we jump too much into the end, how do you feel about the draft, Wolf? Yeah, I, I thought that it, it was just about a mid game for the side of Team Hack because of the sustained lineup that they have. When it comes to um, Echo, what they needed to do was to make the most out of the early game because their composition is for bursts. And whenever they don't have the ultimates, they don't have the team fight integrity. So they had to make the most out of the early game and make Ben Cutie the, the hurricane or the typhoon that we're looking for. Unfortunately, Team Hack found an opening in the mid game. Hey, they didn't let go. Honestly, it could have gone a lot worse for Team Hack. In a lot of situations, <laughs> uh, I would say, pretty much game ending for both laner. Again, mid lane got involved. Hilda dying so early on, giving Brock the level advantage, we made, which made all the difference. Coming down to the bot side, hitting level four perfectly, making sure that Panda dies. So many things could have gone wrong. And that pushback during that mid game, making all the difference. However, my biggest concern was with Lola. Was he able to kind of make the difference? And yes, he did in those team fights. I mean, you could almost argue that if it wasn't for the sneaky play at the end, Team Hawk would have won that game, right? They were winning in some of the team fights. It almost seems like their composition was paying off towards the end. And speaking of gold laners, we had the carry, we had the Aerithal. How are you guys feeling about it? Yeah, yeah. I thought that what the one of the better Aerithal usages that we've seen so far, because the way that they approach is that they went in a face-to-face -face approach where they went to kill anyone who's like fronting for the side of Echo. As you can see, uh, with the items, it, the Aerithal had the Decent KDA, but that doesn't reflect his effect on the game that we saw when he was battling up against Benny mm -hmm. And I mean, at the end of the day, it does come down to the gold laners making the difference. I mean, yep. again, you got to stop the real world manipulation. You have to stop the feather to air strike at the same time. So the difference maker comes down to the gold laners. And that's where we have to talk about the interaction, right? Carry yep. generally is quite short range overall. Yeah. And Irithel can forcefully make yeah. you make at least carry have to walk up to her, gaining yeah. her a single auto attack advantage every single yeah. time. And that's the reason why Benicuti is, uh, I would say, one of the better carry players because of his positioning. He, it kind of makes me feel like he's masterful when it comes to the range of the carry as well as the timing. You never see him waste the flicker. Sometimes he even gets and uses the flicker to go inside the fights. Unfortunately for this game, he was punished many times, but there were some uh, big flares coming out from Benicuti. Apart from the split push that he did, his team fight presence was really felt in this game. Honestly, I want to know what Trench has to say about this, especially when it comes down to the draft, because we were going back and forth on this. Yeah. I mean, I feel like in the beginning, Echo definitely had a huge advantage, not only because of Benny Cutie towards the end game, but I feel like with their set potential, Carl TZ picking up the Grok in the jungle and made it work so, so well. Able to make yeah. some big sets. There was, I think it was second Lord, first Lord, the runaway, him re-engaging. I mean, yeah. just overall. But now, as we come into the next session, take a look at some of those gold counts. Oh, oh wow. So close, ever Very so close. close. A 20 to 20 game as well, 24 minutes <laughs> overall, and even the damage charts just looking absolutely so similar yeah. between both the teams. And this is the time where we don't talk about the cores anymore. Even Sanji, as a position for our mid lane, really uh, pulled up his weight this time, right? He was also the target of Team Hack in the fights that Team Buck was able to win. You gotta have to hand it to um, Lola. He eventually found Sanji like twice in the late game, but in the early to the mid stages, you can see that the main centerpiece of the damage output of Echo was definitely coming out from the Farsa. Surely, we can see like Yaoi performing well with uh, Cho eventually finding the right uh, jumps, but when it comes to like sustainable damage, Sanji is your, your guy in this game. Let's not forget about like the micro adjustments right early yep. game let's focus on gold mid game let's focus on uh the mages and then eventually it's like oh we gotta start diving for benny qt overall yep. right trex i i think the most interesting thing to me right here was the fact that even on those charts right there it seemed like echo was kind of winning out a bit right it seemed like it was it was close but in the end echo had a bit more but the fact that team hawk was able to continuously 
bounce back into the mid game, bounce back, make plays, win out in some of that sustainability, and uh, <laughs> yeah. come out in a lot of those team fights. The major pick for me, I think, was that Yuzong. Right? I mean, just crushing it, making some of the plays happen. Yeah. And y'all, we eventually started to get the kicks onto Min instead, not really able to target down onto the Aerithil, not really to make some of the most important way of the dragon kicks. And in the end, they kept catching Yawi. And that was a moment where Team Hack could have almost had the game. And that's why I felt it was a, a badminton or a, a ping pong match, right? Where they're, they're going back and forth towards the rally. A team that eventually like punishes the opponents and gets a good jump. And then eventually Yaoi will be punished, and then the uh, Lola's Yuzhong will find an opening. And it was a wonderful match to watch. But Benigiri, my god. I guess apart from the last play that he did, there was significant amount of damage up coming up from Benigiri and some flashy plays. Like the one where he used the flicker. He eventually died after a triple kill, but taking down three people before dying, I think it's uh, also impressive from uh, uh, Benny Giddy. I don't like the way you looked at me when you said that very last play. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, we all know what happened at the end there. There's no denying it. Well yeah. played to Echo. They really found those openings. But come on, another back door. Come on. <laughs> I definitely don't think we can count Team Hack out though, right? I mean, it's one game. And the fact that uh, I think a lot of viewers probably believed this was going to be a possible wash. And now we're seeing Team Hack like, like, like I said, yeah. could have been their game. Sadly, it was not. But they just need to watch for the back doors next time. Yeah, pretty much. And you know what's really funny about it is because we were sitting together and uh, Gideon was like, hey, look at the map, look at the map. And then <laughs> so many times he warned Team Hack. Well, Team Hack cannot hear him, but at least twice he said that you have to look at the map. And the I second one. I don't think that's <laughs> fair. You weren't here at the very beginning because I knew you were talking to Echo about that back door. Don't even, know, don't deny me that. But we got to look at the heat map so far, right? And we're talking about Benny QT again. Gold laners generally like to stick to their lane as much as possible, but that doesn't really explain the full thing, right? Because yep. at the end of the day, the Grok was an interesting jungle pick, not to hard carry a game, but to eventually raise up yeah. the rest of the team. But I think when we look at the heat map, right? The, because of the lack of no rotations ever to the mid, didn't ever really try to help in any sort of invasions, just farmed. And that's where yeah. it paid out for Benny Cutie, right? We hung out. We also saw the side of Echo coming down and really trying to pick on Aerithel in that early phase, like in that first two minutes or so. And this is what gave Benny Cutie that huge advantage as they moved into the mid phase. Yeah, what, what I noticed about these uh, heat maps from, the, uh, from a gold laner, if you see this kind of heat map, this kind of pattern, that is where you know that he is given a free farm in the early stages. And we are going to see in full glory the highlights of uh, this match. Echo, you can see that Bandicute already is activated about, what, eight minutes into this game. And there were so many times that everybody is really um, stepping up. There was a time where there was a jump. You see the wild charge coming out from TC that kind of salvaged the game. There, was, there were many jumps coming out from Lola and Yaoi. So I don't think that this is a one-sided match at all. Everybody just you know, pulled their weight. Absolutely. Everybody was playing as good as they can. But I think, you know, the beauty of having Benny QT in this position is that he's not too afraid to be up in front. He's not too afraid to pose the question to Team Hawk. Hey, Sanji's a problem, but I'm a bigger issue. I mean, Echo, I think in general, not scared to push the limit, yeah. right? Even if they're falling behind, even if they're behind in gold, they want to try to take the fight. And I think that's why Benny QT does so well on the carry. That's why they do so well in the carry. So definitely, uh, I have a feeling that he's able to be aggressive with it. He's able to push in. 